watching Ebony Ladies in the DR. I'm your host, Bridget. Bienvenidos a mi canal. Gracias por mirar. So everybody, I went and voted. I'm so proud of me. Whoop, whoop. And I took my niece, who was a first time voter. So y'all know Davila and I moved from Texas. So we still have um, Texas IDs and Texas driver's license. So we went to Houston so that we could be a part of what? History. Because Madame Harris is going to win this election. I'm putting it in the atmosphere. All you uh, Orange 45 supporters, don't even come to my page. We ain't even got nothing to talk about. But people are like asking me because, you know, I'm a black expat. Been living here in the Dominican Republic. It will be six years in January 2025. So people are like, why was this so important for you to go vote? Did somebody really just ask me that question? Do you really know Bridget? You must not. This is your first time to the channel. I get it. Stop what you're doing right now. Click subscribe, like and share my videos. Because if you ask that question, then you do not know me. Because I am all about minding my business and the business of the country I live in. Okay, so um, that was a crazy question. I had to go vote because okay one thing y'all maybe don't know is that once you get um citizenship in another country because it is a dual citizenship company country so you can hold passports in the dominican republic and the united states but something i did not know is you cannot vote in two different countries you can only vote in one country you have to choose and if you are choosing to vote in the Dominican Republic as a U.S. citizen, you have to give up your U.S. passport. So I had to go and vote in the U.S. elections. That was a no-brainer anyway, because we are not going back, everybody. We want to go forward. We want this world to be a better place. So if I could vote, I would absolutely vote here in the Dominican Republic because there's so much going on here. People that have bought here in the Dominican Republic and don't live here full time, oh my God, you guys, we have to stay involved, especially those of us that live here full time. And like my title says, black expats, or not just black expats, expats, do you have a voice? And even though we can't vote, we absolutely do have a voice. And I'm gonna tell y'all little things that I, I do that I feel like make an impact and I feel like that help when I follow the news by Vito Digital. Um, I always comment on what I feel like they are doing wrong or what they could do better um, along with other Dominicans, along with other maybe expats that are, are following them on Instagram like the light situation was out for a really long time out by coco bongo which is the main super busy light going to jumbo right the light was out for like almost a week and everybody's in there voicing 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 like why isn't the police department or the, the department of safety or the highway patrol whatever department handles that situation why wasn't that a priority in the same day i don't even want to give it one day because so many accidents happen the fatality rate is through the roof is not going down from the time that we've lived here and so those are things that we can be very vocal about as the expats living here that aren't allowed to participate in the elections and not vote and one thing I, another thing that i felt like i did um so y'all know i do reviews and i go out to local establishments local businesses one of the businesses that I featured, I'm not even going to give it any more publicity. One of the businesses that I featured, the owner was all on, on, on social media um, and putting Kamala Harris, which is our presidential elect, um, in, I, in my opinion, I feel strongly it's going to happen. But he was strongly um, saying hateful things about her, saying he's not with her and all of this kind of stuff. So what did I do? I took down my episode. I shut it down, everybody, because I don't want to feel like I am promoting um, a business that possibly the money that I'm helping them to earn is going to fund a campaign for Orange 45. 
that ain't happening over here. So when you see things on my page and then you can no longer find them, it could just be something along those lines because I have the power to do that because this is my channel. And when you guys support people that don't have the same beliefs as you, it's like really voting for the other guy. And then those of you that are independents right now that are still undecided, I'm like, what? I, I, I don't even know. I can't even appeal to your, your sense of intelligence because at this point, if you are still undecided, it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what world you living in. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are like, well, Bridget, you can't just vote for her because she's black. You can't just vote for her because she's a woman. I'm not voting for her because she's a person of color. If y'all don't want to see her as black, no problem. Um, her, she's still a person of color. Uh, I'm not voting for her because she's a woman. I am voting. I, I'm not saying I am voting. I voted. I voted. Past this, y'all. I, I like, okay, let me keep going. And then I'm going to reflect on something else. I voted because that is the best person for the job. She is the best person right now to help relationships in the U.S. She is the best person right now to help bridge the gap between the United States and other countries. We, if you all elect Orange 45, you are getting a felon that cannot even visit more than there are at least 30 countries where as a felon, you cannot come into their country. So you have, you would be putting in a person, a clown, in my opinion, that cannot even go and fairly represent you in other countries with the negotiations, with things that could better your life as an American citizen. So that's why I, if you're still undecided, it's beyond me. If you're voting for Orange 25, it's beyond me. And, and that's just one of those things where you are straight up saying, I don't want to be led by a woman. I don't want to be led by a person of color. All right. And so let me tell y'all something. Texas is going to be turned blue. But I'm not saying all the voters there were voting blue. I just got my fingers crossed. But they broke record numbers. There were 840,000 votes casted on October 22nd, three days ago. On October 22nd, there were, uh, yeah, October 21st. October 21st, I'm wrong. October 21st was the first day of early voting in Texas, and we went and voted and because it was that important to us. I am always going to have a voice, be it here in the Dominican Republic or in the United States. Now, I'm in the Dominican Republic. I cannot vote in elections here, but I can make my voice heard, and I do on a regular basis. But through this channel and through being out and about in the community, because I've been to the mayor's office, I know who the mayor is. I've seen Abernatter at Cogota more than once. So whenever I have the opportunity, I am going to speak up and I encourage all of you to do the same thing. Because right now, the Dominican Republic and, and Ponce Cana is kind of going through some things because the president, he proposed this tax hike that doesn't necessarily, it, it ha doesn't have a huge effect on me because the biggest thing was, I think the property tax and they're trying to do away with the confiture. And of those of you that may not know what the confiture is, if you buy property here in the Dominican Republic, that's over 150,000, you have to pay property taxes. Well, the Confitur eliminates that property tax um, for 15 years. We'll never have it because our property fell under the 150. And if you are new to the channel, you can see my house by going to the episode that says, what can I get in the Dominican Republic for under $200,000? It would be this little casa, a key. Okay, so, but that's one of the things. But one of the things that does affect us is they're trying to put an 18% 18, you heard that right, 18%. And I thought Tennessee and Mississippi was high. They're trying to put an 18% tax on everything, all food except for chicken, rice, bread, and eggs. That would be the only thing that doesn't have the 18% tax. Now, milk, water, you heard me. Y'all hear me. 
18% tax on those things, necessities. We can't drink the water here. There shouldn't be any tax on water. So the last week has been very interesting to me um, as an expat because I'm seeing the Dominicans do what? They are showing up and showing out. They are protesting. They are in the streets. They are hanging out their balconies in Santo Domingo and all the people that lived in high rises. They did, a, I think it was a crock pot protest where they were hanging out of their windows and banging the pipes to make the noise to let the government say is not okay. So when I ask the question to y'all on this topic, do expats have a voice? Absolutely, we have a voice. So when there are protests going on in your cities, especially here in Punta Cana, guys, you have to stay informed. You have to follow um, Dominica, what is it, Dominican Today, um, that website. You have to follow Babado Digital, Babado News on Instagram. So you can know what's going on. So when the Dominicans are out there protesting, get out there. Let's be a part of that and let them know. Because they think, y'all, that all of y'all, not us, not me and Devlin. They know me and Devlin, they rich. That all of you Americans are rich and y'all come here with all y'all money, bling, bling, and you, you, you know, making it rain everywhere. So they feel like since you know, there are so many expats in Punta Cana that they can do that, that they can raise the prices and it's going to be okay because we're going to pay it. Well, it's not okay. We're not going to pay it. And I, I feel like within two years, this trend, this boom to live in Punta Cana is going to go away. And the government has not prepared for that end, which they should be. Instead of constantly building, 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 let's work on the infrastructure. The last few days, we've been out of the country, but our um, pet sitter said that it's been raining nonstop. Well, going through the city as we were coming in, you see puddles and puddles and puddles of rain. And it is not okay, because there's got to be some drainage system. There's going to be 10,000 more cars here in, in a year. And where are we going to park? Where are we going to park? Um, if everything is flooded and the little potholes, if there's constant water sitting in the potholes, become big potholes, then we're running through them, tearing up our cars. This is not going to be the place to be. But if we don't, if we don't stay, stay silent to it, things can change. Things, this can be the paradise that we all see it as now and that we want it to continue to be in the future. So we have to use our voice. And, you know, it's just like, if I could have a vote in the second, uh, second election, I'm not going to say that I would have voted for Abinader. The, the first term, I think he did a really good job because that was our first few years here. And we were seeing the, the lights, the traffic lights going up. We were seeing more garbage trucks. We were, we were seeing the areas being a little bit cleaner on a more consistent basis. So I was like, okay, all right, he, he doing a good job. He's doing what he needs to do. So then towards the end, uh, it started to drift off. Everything was more about him breaking ground and grand opening ceremonies and everything was fabulous. And all of the high society of Dominican Republic were all at these wonderful events, you know, but things that were meaningless to your average everyday citizen and expats that are living here. So we want substance. We want things that are gonna make a difference. And in order for that to happen, you have to be a part of the solution. You have to be a, you have to get involved, you know? And I know a lot of people are like, but you're going back to the States and vote. I'm always gonna go back to the States and vote. Cause as long as I hold a, a US passport, it's still, what goes on there still affects me. If I'm still getting paid in US dollars when I go to the States and work and do contract work, and I'm still paying into social security, and y'all wanna vote in a clown on 25 that wants to do away with social security? Ain't nobody having that. I'm counting on that. I'm counting down to 62 so that I can get my social security check. So I want a president who cares about that. I want a president who didn't grow up with the silver spoon in their mouth to say, okay, I know these people have worked hard all their lives. The government needs to take care of them. The government needs to take care of me when I'm 62.
period. So that's why it was so important for me to go back to the U.S. and put in my vote. And because we cannot go back with having the same clown in office again, who really don't want to run the country, who really is just trying to get in office to pardon himself so that he will not have to have a record, so that he will not have to face jail time. And if that's what y'all want, that's what y'all gonna get. So be sure, I'm gonna tell y'all vote blue to save this country, vote blue to protect women's rights, vote blue to have democracy and stop hate, vote blue, down the ticket. You know, cause there, it, there are so many, there's so many things wrong with the GOP right now that they, they are all jumping ship. And, and voting for Harrison Watts. So, you know, I know y'all don't like political uh, videos, as maybe some of y'all do. I know it's gonna be a bunch of backlash because there still seems to be a lot of Orange 45 supporters out there. I don't wanna hear it. You don't even have to come on this page, but I'm always gonna be vocal and politics is a part of my life. So just like I show restaurants and, and uh, clothing stores and reviews of apartments, I'm going to share this part of my life, which is very important to me, is politics, because I am at that age where I'm going to be looking forward to my Social Security. I'm at that age where I cannot afford for rising costs for food and electricity and gas and all of those things. So we have to be vocal. And I have a niece and a nephew that I want to have a good life. I don't want them to have a struggling, hard life filled with hate and racism and all of those things. That's not what any of us should want for you know the younger generations. We want them to have a better life. If you're a first time voter like my niece, shout out to you. Get out there, make your make your um voice your voice heard. Make your vote vote count. Get out there and be a part of democracy. Be a part of the system that you live in because every single thing is going to affect you either directly or indirectly. All right, you guys, I appreciate you as always for watching my channel. Subscribe, everybody. Hit the subscribe button, like, and share this video. And I, you know, I welcome the comments before or against, you know, what I say because we're not all going to agree to everything. We can agree to disagree. I'm okay with it. Y'all know I have tough skin. I already had a bunch of the haters um, because they know that I am strongly supporting Harris and Walls. And I hope to uh, be partying on your inauguration day with the right candidate. All right. So I hope you guys vote. Don't forget to vote. Get out there and vote. Early vote and get it over with. All right, like, subscribe, and share to my channel, and follow me every day for a little bit of Spanish. <laughs> okay, I will talk to y'all soon. Take care, and go vote.